Hey everyone, Jo here and welcome to my video today and to part four of my five part series of weight loss mistakes and how to avoid them. In this video, I'd like to share five weight loss mistakes that may be holding you back in reaching your weight management goals. Losing weight does not have to be a gloomy journey and there are many tips and tricks that you can try to accelerate the process and stay on track. So stay tuned. So please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell below so that you automatically receive new videos from me when they come out. So here we go, common mistake number one, overestimating the calories burned at the gym. So you've been slogging away on the elliptical at the gym for about 55 minutes and you see that you've burned a whopping 600 calories and you bounce up and down with joy knowing that the chocolate cake you ate the day before has now been used to fuel your workout and you feel good about your results and then you wonder to yourself, have I burned that many calories? Is that true? Or is it the machine just telling me porkies? Well, this figure is slightly exaggerated as most fitness equipment machines tend to overestimate calorie expenditure anywhere from 15 to 20%. For you to have a somewhat more accurate calorie burn figure, the machine would have to know more about you, more personal details like age and gender, exercise, record, weight and resting metabolic rate, etc. So consider getting yourself a fitness watch or a tracker that can be used to monitor you personally. I use Fitbit Charge HR and I love it as it measures my heart rate too, which is important when doing cardio training. Check out the link in the description below this video for details of the one that I'm using. And common mistake number two is not varying your workouts. Varying your workouts doesn't need to be done every single time you work out. However, doing the same exercise four days a week for a year may demotivate you because everyone likes variety, right? So it's important to up your level of activity and change what you're doing so that you can engage other muscle groups and develop your aerobic capacity and generally increase strength and stamina. After a while, your body adapts to the workouts that you're doing and the repetitive effect this has. So mix things up a little bit and change your workouts as, as well as the intensity. Check out HIIT training, which is high intensity interval training. If you would like to add some more explosive exercises to your workouts. HIIT is great because it relies on body weight, so it can be done anytime and anywhere. Check my website for details of HIIT training. And number three, crash dieting. Come on, those of us that have been on any weight loss program have all tried the crash dieting route, right? Whether it just be soups, just liquids or drastically cutting calories, we've all been there. And crash dieting has some adverse effects on the body when one does this. And it's impossible for us to give our body the nutrients it needs on a daily basis. It's also known to slow down metabolism, which may result in weight gain when you come off your crash diet, since the body burns calories more slowly. Our bodies need a steady supply of calories and all we have to do is make sure that we give ourselves the right nutritional source of calories. And number four, eliminating food groups such as carbohydrates. There are many trendy diet regimes out there and one of the most popular ones is the ketogenic diet. And this diet regime adopts a no carb or low carb intake. So low carb equates to around 20 grams per day as this approach allows the body to get into a metabolic state known as ketosis. In the absence of carbohydrates, namely glucose, the body will then start to burn fat and ketones. However, to function correctly, our body needs a balance of all macronutrients, carbs, proteins, and fats. So try not to think of food groups as bad foods, as this will help to establish a good relationship with the food types. After all, food is just food. And last not but least, number five, liquid calories. Getting most of your calories from liquids is a tricky one because most people tend not to think about the calories contained in drinks such as wine, beer, fizzy carbonated drinks, sweetened teas, etc. And pure plain water has zero calories and it's the best fluid for our body. 
Anything that is added to water normally adds additional calories. And if you drink coffee or tea with sugar, perhaps consider leaving out the sugar. If you like to drink alcohol, then drink it in moderation. And remember that a medium-sized glass of wine has around 120 calories. So if you're going to do a calorie-restricted diet, it's best to double-check how many of your calories are in liquid form. So that's it, guys. If you got some value out of my video today, please like, share and subscribe and hit that notification bell down below. Check out my website for health and fitness related articles as well as free eBooks. Thanks for watching today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.